All right, everybody. Hey, it's Big Daddy. You know what this means when I when you see this big head on the screen. It means it's time for Big Daddy and Friends. And as always, I'm going to bring people on the show that have been there, have done it, are doing it, and really know what they're saying, and they talk about things that they know. I don't bring on fake people, so I'm so proud and honored to have this next guest because he's a friend of mine. We haven't talked in a while, so we're going to catch up, and we're going to have some laughs, and we're going to learn a little bit about baseball and owning a baseball team, and not only one, but maybe two or three or uh, I don't know. But Gary's going to have to fill us in on where what he's got going on. So everyone who's watching and listening, welcome Gary Green. What's up, Gary? Uh, thanks, Big Daddy. Great to be here. And uh, I'm glad we're finally catching up. It's been a while, but I guess you can say that with everybody with COVID. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it has been. I mean, you know what? This whole Zoom uh, email thing is... Uh, it's taken over, you know, it's, it's what it is now daily and, you know, weekly and monthly, but hopefully, uh, I hope I knock on wood that we're heading back in the direction that we were used to be in so that we could see each other, you know, and mingle yeah, and, do, no. you know, do all no, the things. Abs- absolutely. I've been recruiting for, uh, for a position in the organization and, and the zoom interviews, they just pile up after each other. And, you know, kidding around. It's like you learn you learn when to push the mute button when you need to go to the bathroom and step away from the screen and come back, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or that or I'll tell you what someone did to me one day was all of a sudden the screen disappeared and just their name was there. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, uh, he probably had to go get something to drink or go to the bathroom, like you said. But uh, anyway, yeah. you yeah. know, anyway, so – All right. So listen, uh, I know the whole story. So we're going to share a story uh, here with our uh, our viewers and listeners. Uh, So, Gary, you're originally from Long Island, where I'm from. And now um, you you've grown up successful businessman and you uh, you're in the baseball business. So I uh, I want to share with everyone what led you into this love for baseball and how you got started. And I, you know, those are the things that people that are watching and listening want to learn and know about, because one, obviously you're a success. And two, most successful people aren't as nice as you are and as generous and giving. So that's the thing that I want to share with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, You know, I always admire people that are the same person they were when they had nothing and when they had something. And I try to surround myself with people like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's why I try to be. So thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Um, Yeah, my love for baseball was growing up a a New York Mets fan. I remember 1973 World Series was my first um, baseball memory. I remember my dad taking me to Shea Stadium. Um, My dad was a Brooklyn Dodger fan, so he grew up hitting the Yankees. I've grown up hating the Yankees uh, and, um, you know, we're Met fans, Brooklyn Dodger fans and New York Giant fans were our Met fans. So I uh, grew up with that. Uh, we used to live down the street from Tug McGraw, um, which was uh, exciting in, in Kings Point, New York. Mm-hmm. And so you know, that was like a great baseball highlight and, uh, of my childhood. And then I was sitting around with my uh, friend and business partner one day. Um, he was a client at the time, Larry Botel. And... Um, we were talking about baseball and uh, we, I said, Oh, I'd love to own a minor league team someday. And he said, so would I, why don't we go look at some? So, you know, the hardest thing about anything is just taking that first step. So um, we found a broker. We started traveling around the country, looking for teams, anything in the Eastern half of the U S and we had a great time. We went to Asheville, um, South Carolina. We went to Staten Island. We went to Memphis we, we went to um, Bowie, Maryland, and um, finally, you know, we went to Norwich, Connecticut, where there was a team that um, was not doing well at all. It was owned by, I think you know, you probably know Lou DiBella, the boxing yeah. promoter. Yeah. yeah. And Lou's, Lou's great. And, and, Lou's, and so we met with Lou, and, uh, and, you know, Lou's like a big personality guy. He's big personality, and I think – you know, maybe sometimes like so big, maybe people can get scared off. So yeah. like we loved him. We met him. We felt very comfortable with him. And um, he needed to get the team out of Norwich and he needed to move the team to Richmond. 
and um, he just we needed to we needed to clean up the balance sheet. And um, we worked together with Lou. We moved the team to Richmond, Virginia. Um, we named the team the Flying Squirrels. Um, anybody who wants to do any research, I will not say what the Urban Dictionary definition is of a flying squirrel because I, I I can't it even. It's a clean show. <laughs> it's a clean show, and it's an X-rated definition. We didn't know that. Um, so, and the team was a huge success. We got, we all got named Richmonders of the year without having even been there that much. And so <laughs> huge success. And, um, we started looking for, with the broker for other teams and the, the broker came to us and said, Hey, there's a team in Omaha, Nebraska. And if you're interested at all, um, you know, Warren Buffett will meet with you. So immediately I go to my financial head and I'm like, well, people pay $3 million for that meeting. So. I'm interested. So we met, we met with Mr. Buffett and I was like, all right, I'm $3 million ahead of the game. So, um, and that was, and that was it. And we, we met with him and we, uh, he, he met with me for 90 minutes. Um, didn't ask a single business question. It was all baseball comparing stories about our childhood from baseball. And I'll never forget it. I walked up, he shook my hand. He said, we have a deal. I want you to own the team. And all he really cared about that I was a baseball fan. He did not care that uh, he did not want me to be a businessman. And so he wanted me to be a baseball lover. Now I'm a businessman with the team. I have to be, I have investors and you know, I want, I want to make a profit. Um, but it was, uh, it was pretty cool how he did business. And another example of another guy who like if he could be humble and he was so humble and his office was small, my office is so much bigger in New York. If a guy like that, the greatest capitalist in our generation can be humble, then mm -hmm. we all can be humble. Yeah. And uh, it was really, I got to meet with Mr. Buffett around, uh, around eight times and he's just, I don't meet with him anymore. He slowed down his schedule. Um, but just, just a really neat experience, cool experience. And, um, and he's, he's an aw shucks guy who's just you know, obviously very smart. So that's how I got into the business. Hire a broker, get in a plane, and start going to look at teams and kick the tires and figure out, you know, if it's something you can do. Now, uh, I know this. You had a lot of success because you got a couple of rings, I know, that uh, share those. Share that with the, with the listener. Sure. Well, I have a lot of rings and a lot of success. But owning a minor league baseball team is is owning the business. So um, if you're lucky enough to to uh, to hitch a ride with some of these great organizations um, and they have good players, you get a ring. So I got to be honest, the minor league model is I try to make the players happy. We try to give them the right setting, the right fan base um, and just make them comfortable. But for our rings in Richmond, where we were the Giants affiliate there. And we got three rings when the Giants run in one in 10, 12, and 14. Um, Brian Sabian, the Giants, provided us with, you know, excellent, <clears throat> I mean, excellent players. But the, the, the Giants gave us three World Series rings. So mm -hmm. we actually got three World Series rings with the Giants, none with the Squirrels. Um, on the Royals side, uh, Dave Moore, and, you know, he'd be a great person for your show, um, one of the great leaders and, and somebody who I really um, emulate his leadership style, his players really like Alex Gordon and, you know, he retired and Eric Hosmer who moved on, but these guys just run through brick walls for this guy. Um, we had, we had um, teams that won the championship <clears throat> in, um, in 13 and 14 and just, we got provided great players by the Royals and the Royals. It's interesting. Um, you know, teams, We'll develop talent and if somebody's ready they'll send them up and another player's ready to send them up what the royals have done and a lot of people don't know this they um they keep the core they try to keep the core together of players and have a core that's used to winning at single a double a and triple a keep the core together so they're used to winning together so that they win at the major league level and that's what they did with the 15 royals and um and the 14 royals that made it to the world series and so you know, Dayton and, and Scott Sharp and J.J. Piccolo, they, they gave us some great players. So um, we were very thankful. And and I got um, a World Series ring with the Royals, too, in 2015, although they beat my Mets. So um, yeah. <laughs> I have I have uh, I think I have seven rings in total. And um, 
you know, my wife lets me wear them once in a while instead of the wedding ring. <laughs> I hear you. I'll, I'll tell you, I had the good fortune of meeting Brian Sabian and uh, one of the classiest, most funnest guys I was ever around. And, you know, me being like a football guy, that was really different to, you know, see his world and be a part of it because, you know, I got to hang out with him and I was on an all-star game. And then, and then the funniest story ever was uh, he was like, Big Daddy, you know, you got to break this football mold. I, I got to get you to a baseball game. So you're going to come watch us play when we play the Mets. Okay. He goes, I'm going to give you 20 tickets. And I'm like, I don't need that many. I'll, you know, I'll come, I'll bring two buddies. No, 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 no. I want you to really, really. Uh, okay. I get 20 people lined up. We go, and it happened to be about 101 that day. <laughs> it was, it was a, one, a one o'clock game. So uh. when I tell you that, the group started at 20. By the fifth inning, it was down to like five. By the ninth inning, it was just me. And I'm like, look, I'm grateful, and I want to thank him for having us you know, out and whatnot. So what happened was he was up top watching the game, and he was looking down with his binoculars, and he saw me sitting there with my legs up on the dugout. And he said, and I'm like, I'm in shorts. Oh, so he's he's in an air conditioned suite, and you're downstairs in the sun. <laughs> yeah, I'm down in the sun. Like I had a big group, so that's where he put us. So okay, whatever. Yeah. And then I go up to him after the game, and he's like, "Oh, so what do you think of the game?" And I'm like, "Well, I'll tell you one thing. You can tell I probably lost like five pounds." And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, yeah, you look comfortable too when you were working on your tan when your legs are up on the uh, dugout." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, I go. I got a little hot for the group, so uh, you know, I uh, I would suck it up and take it for the team and suck it up yeah. and play the whole game and and thank you in person because I know they were leaving to go back to the West Coast. So, yeah. but now." So next in line, do you want to own an MLB team? Sure. Who doesn't want to? Own? What minor league owner wouldn't want to own an MLB team? But um, <clears throat> I'm a couple of billion dollars short, so I got to work on that. Yeah, but, and, you, <laughs> and, and, uh, and I have a great connection for you too. By the way, we'll talk about off air for that. Okay, hey, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's like that's it's like that Steve Martin. It's like that Steve Martin joke. How to how to. Um, how to make a million, how to be a millionaire and not pay taxes. He said, first, make a million dollars, right? So first, <laughs> how to be a major league owner. I'll take $2 billion and then I'll figure it out. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, but I feel like, I feel like if I was in that position, I have the knowledge. I think in minor league baseball, you've done every job, you roll up your sleeves and I can't believe some of the things that we've had to figure out and do. And also as a soccer team owner, um, what we have to figure out and do. So, uh, yeah, I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. Well, uh, I'm, you know, I tried one time, but I'm going to give it another shot. So I asked uh, Buffett. I asked yeah. Buffett if he wanted to buy a major league team with me. And, um, and, you know, he said, oh, so many people have asked me, but no thanks. And I actually, I was having dinner with Richard Branson one night, and I asked him, I was like, hey, let's buy a major league team. He said, I hate American sports. So, so I got to ask, I got to ask two pretty big guys if they want to buy a team and they both shot me down and it was actually within the same month. So, you know, well, I'm going to bring a third, but like I said, we'll talk about that off air. <laughs> okay. uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, and, and it's, 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 uh, you know, like a hero and, and let me finish my thought before you respond to me. Um, you know why? Because you're a fellow Long Islander and, um, uh, and I've seen the progress. I've seen all the things that you get involved with in charities. And, and don't forget my charity, by the way. But anyway, I see all the things that you do. And uh, and it's and we have mutual friends. I mean, my brother introduced us. But, you know, we have a lot of mutual friends that, uh, you know, your name comes up in a conversation. And I was telling somebody yesterday, I don't forget who it was. And I said, yeah, I'm interviewing Gary Green. They're like, really? Yeah. How'd you get him? I called him and asked. I mean, you know, it's, and 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 that's why I guess you know your humble side comes in and 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 look, I'm grateful and appreciative and and it's awesome to share a success story. One because you're a friend, and two because you're from New York. You know, I think those are things 
that a lot of people don't that sometimes take for granted and don't appreciate. But I, I'll tell you one thing I do. And uh, I appreciate knowing you and being friends and and sharing your story, you know, because it's a great story to share and tell. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate our friendship and uh, and, you know, your kind words today. And, uh, you know, it's just so much so much fun getting together and talking casually. But I think this is even more fun you know, yeah, yeah, to is. share stories. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, we're, it, we're just missing the we're missing the the uh, missing the the happy hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I got my water. <laughs> listen, me too. I, I got my water here. As well, so it's funny. So now, okay, now let's talk a little bit World Series. So obviously, who do you think? Uh, obviously, we know who you'd like to be there, but who do you who are you looking at as a favorite right now? You think from uh, the two? Yeah, it's all about- it's all about getting hot at the right time. It's all about avoiding those wild card games, which anything could go, anything can happen. And, uh, you know, so <clears throat> I love the way the Dodgers are coming on strong, even without um, Trevor Bauer. And, mm-hmm. you know, my guess is he won't be back um, or he shouldn't be back for the rest of the year. Uh, but they picked up Scherzer. Um, they picked up Trey Turner. And I think that trade um, really makes them – a favorite, especially if they could catch the uh, catch the Giants in that in that division. I think they're the they're the best team. They have Walker Bueller. I mean, they're just a great lineup, up and down. Um, and uh, you know, look, the um, the Padres are starting to fade. I like them at the beginning of the season. I'm not even sure if they'll be in the playoffs. Um, and the Giants, you know, they're they're doing it with like no real big star power. Maybe Buster Posey. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're an interesting play. The Braves have been hot. Um, they're missing their best player, Acuna, um, but they've been hot. And I think they won not. They just won nine in a row before the Yankees beat them. So um, th- that's the National League. In the American League, I think that while the Yankees are hot right now, I could never mm. predict the Yankees to go to the World Series because I just dislike them so much. So um, why, <laughs> I got to go with Houston. <laughs> oh, I got to go with. <laughs> no, I got to go with you. I got to go with Houston because Houston's always they have that chip on their shoulder because everybody hates them from the cheating scandal. Yeah. Um, and you know I love the Rays. We, we're we're a Rays Double A affiliate in Montgomery, Alabama, and they just always have a better mousetrap with um with the low payroll. So um, you know and. <laughs> Like the Yankees, you know, I think I think the Yankees, if they make it far in the playoffs, I think Chapman is not – he's not reliable. Obviously, Zach Britton isn't reliable. Um, you know, let's see who gets hurt the rest of the season. So, when it comes to the Yankees, I'll always be glass half empty. <laughs> got it, got it. Uh, well, you heard it here from Gary Green. So, he just told you what he thinks and uh, who he thinks, and uh, we'll have to go with that because you're – you're the expert, you're the professional, and you're in that mix. <laughs> I don't know about that. I want the Mets. The Mets, <laughs> did their, the Mets did their typical second half fade after the All-Star break. And, um, you know, I just think uh, we did – we've done that every year except for 15, 2015, when we got Cespedes. And look what happened – you know, mess with him. But uh, anyway, we'll just have to – we'll just have to look toward towards next year. So what do you think? I, I've been following uh... – this uh, show high Otoni, okay? Do you think that's going to be a trend? Because you don't see too many guys that are pitching, batting, and 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 doing what this guy's doing. I mean, it's incredible. That's like saying, you know, is Babe was Babe Ruth going to be a trend? There was no Babe Ruth, you know. Yeah. It was just Babe well, Ruth. Yeah. So um, I saw that uh, David Justice who used to play for the Yankees and the Braves. He said today that he thought that uh, Otani was as good, if not better, than. Babe Ruth. And I'm like, how does he like, how does he say that? Because he wasn't alive to watch Babe Ruth play. It's a completely different, um, it's a completely different game now. So I think Otani's got to do it injury free over a number of seasons. But, you know, I love what he's doing. I love that, you know, he, look, he, when he came over, he didn't go for the most money. He, he knew where he wanted to play. And I, I respect that. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun to watch to watch him. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's uh, setting a trend. I'll tell you that because uh, you know he is. Everyone loves him, and he's doing everything you know that uh, 
most human beings, I can't even hit a baseball, yeah. let alone what he's doing. I mean, pitching, yeah. and, and hitting, it's like bow down. Yeah. You know, bow down. Uh, look, we've had some. We've had some good Japanese players here. You know, Ichiro was a great player. Um, Hideki Matsui for the um, for the Yankees, um, but nobody's come close. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, you know, he is on a different level. So yeah. I learned a little. I learned a little bit about uh, you know double A ball and triple A ball. So I know there's rule changes. And there's yeah. one that really intrigues me, and I, I'd love to get your opinion on it. Is the, <laughs> is the one where the extra innings, the runner starts on second base. That one That's really, in the major leagues. That's yeah, in the major well, leagues too. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one. I was scratching my head because I didn't know anything about that. But you know, I was doing some research, and like I said, um, I got a lot of producers that are, were excited that you were coming on because they just wanted to talk baseball. And they were throwing – that was one of the questions that really stuck out that I was like, i got to ask Gary what he thinks about that. So Yeah, I have a very strong opinion on this. So, um, look, the, the, and we, I own Baseball America, and we deal with this all the time. The headwinds of baseball mm-hmm. is that baseball, the fans are getting older, and there's not enough young fans. And the comp, with competition of all these things that are different than baseball, we have so much competition now, um, the games – need to be a little shorter and it's got to be more action packed. So, you know, everybody gives our, our commissioner, commissioner man for the hard time for various things. Um, and the rule changes is one of them. And I really like what the commissioner is doing as far as changing the game. So the game can perpetuate itself and get younger fans. Mm-hmm. And so the ghost runner, it's what it's called the ghost runner in extra innings, um, starting out with a runner at second inning, in the second inning, I think it's great. I think fans, the, the most unsatisfying thing as a baseball fan that I could think of is leaving a game in the 10th or 11th or 12th or 13th inning and not having a winner, not knowing who won. Mm-hmm. And, you know, missing a moment. And, you know, sometimes just it's too much baseball. So the ghost runner in 10th inning um, allows, makes, makes it pretty clear that the game will go 10 or 11 innings, usually not 12. And it's just more exciting. And it's just one of the things that the commissioner has done to change the rules. Now, from what I understand, it's a COVID-based rule, and it may go back to not being next year. I really like it as a permanent rule. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like for a double header. I like seven inning games if it's a same ticket double header, one ticket. Yeah. If it's a separate gate double header. I don't think two seven inning games is fair for the fans, but um, fourteen innings of baseball for me, two different games starting in the afternoon, that's perfect. Um, the rule changes in the minor league making the bases bigger, so it's slightly easier to steal, less injuries, easier to make calls for the umpires. I like it. Um, they're going to start um, limiting the shifts. I think getting rid of the shifts in baseball or limiting them so that baseball can become more of a contact sport again instead of just strikeouts or home runs. Um, I know the commissioner wants to do that. He's looking at it. That's a great, that's a great change. Um, moving the pitching mound back, I think it's a double-edged sword. I think it'll be slower pitches. And, you know, guys now, the pitching mound is where it always has been. Guys are bigger and stronger now, the pitchers. They throw harder, and it's a little dangerous. Moving the mound back, I think, can slow down pitches. I think it could also make – um, breaking pitches break more. So that kind of needs to be looked at. But there's, I love the way that the commissioner's tinkering with the game, trying to change things and adapt because the traditionalists, if they had their way, you know, they, they were, if the traditionalists had their way in the NBA, there would have been no rule changes and no three point line. And the NBA was suffering for scoring. In the NFL, um, if the traditionalists kept their way, the rule changes would have happened that made the game so much more exciting now with all the scoring and passing. So um, for some reason, all these other sports are allowed to change the rules to make it more exciting. But, you know, baseball gets shit for doing it. And uh, and I think that baseball needs to break out of that mold and, and make these changes so that the, the younger fans, the generation of younger fans can see a quicker game, a more exciting game, and more of a contact game. Yeah, because, you know, it, it's funny, uh, you you – you mentioned that the popularity of baseball, it needs to get back up and grow. 
And right now, like, obviously, because uh, I live in Long Island, right now, soccer and lacrosse dominate everything. Mm-hmm. I think because it's a cheaper sport to play and, you know, it's easy and it's not as much contact and whatnot. But I used to tell people all the time, how many of those kids get concussions trying to be uh, Pele and hit the ball with their head? You know, they, they <laughs> finally got rid of that. But, you know, uh, and there's a way to, you know, you got to have like tournaments and you have to, you got to give things to get things. And that's where, uh, you know, baseball probably needs to go to get the youth back into it. Because I remember as a, and I grew up in New Hyde Park, we played everything because we didn't have a lot of kids, you know, even in high school. I, my high school class was 246 students, you know, and everybody played football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, track, and whoever, and I don't know what other sports were available. Soccer came my senior year in high school. But, you know, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, you know, you could create a movement just by what you just said here. You know, I mean, we'll get it out yeah. there and let everybody hear it, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so- look, soccer's on the rise. I mean, soccer in this country, um, more and more kids are playing soccer. Um, and I think they see the money that's being made in Europe by soccer players. And I think where kids see the money and watch it on TV, that's where the athletic kids are going to go. I mean, could you imagine if, you know, this country, if we had players like and athletes like Michael Jordan or Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. instead of picking up the basketball, kick the soccer ball instead, and that was what they loved. I mean, we have such a massive population here and so many kids that love athletics that I think American soccer, men's American soccer, is going to, you're going to see a big um, uh, big increase in results over the next decade or two. And I think it's just sheer numbers. Well, it's I, I got to watch, you know, the World Cup. I was really, I got in tune with that. And it was really cool, but you, you, and I went to two parties where there was over a hundred people in the room and, you know, you would yeah. not even see that for a football game, but to see world, I mean, it was like, and obviously the Italians won and every uh, Italian flag that was available, I think was bought out. And oh, that was the Euro. Up. That was the Euro cup. The Euro right? cup. The Euro yeah. Cup. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. That was, uh, and I got to sit and, you know, I watched some friends of mine and that was, Everyone was like this, tuned in, and everything else was tuned out. And kids all wearing shirts, and every, I mean, just yeah, you know, it's uh, that was an exciting time. And and you know, soccer is definitely, definitely on the rise. So yeah, I mean, soccer, soccer, soccer is great. I mean, look at like the last World Cup final. You have a country like France who's got eighty million people playing against Croatia, who's got three million people, yeah. and. <laughs> It's like the sense of nationalism and pride and, and just togetherness and, you know, owning a soccer team and a baseball team to play in the same stadium, you really get to see the difference between the sports and, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, I've had people come up to me, we've had played soccer for two seasons. People come up to me and say, Hey, you know, I was getting ready to leave Omaha. That's where the team is. And, um, there was just, I had nothing here. I really didn't have anything to stay for. And the team that you have and the team you've created and the supporter culture and this family, and we're in the parking lot and, you know, tailgating and I never have, I always eat for free. <laughs> and so, um, and, you don't and, think and, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, know, hearing that, by the way, not to cut you off, you know, I got to let the, 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 the viewers and listeners know, I had my first Shake Shack burger with you Ah, in your suite. At City Field, yeah. At City Field. (laughs) That's the first time I ever had one. Everyone was going crazy. And and I'll never forget because my brother Louie was there, and they had brought in a whole tray, and that tray went like hotcakes. And and Louie and I were laughing because Louie's like, you know you don't want to go up there first because it's going to look really obvious. (laughs) And we're going to probably take like three. And I go, yeah, you're right. We'll wait. And then I remember that whole tray was gone in like five seconds. And I'm like, I was ready to cry. I'm like, well, I guess we're going to have to run around. And, you're, and you kind of read, you may not remember this, but you read the look on both of our faces. And you're like, don't worry. 
there's a, there's more coming. <laughs> you don't go you don't go hungry in Gary Green, sweet. I'll tell no, you. you don't. You don't go hungry or thirsty. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But anyway, go ahead. I cut you off. No, no. So anyway, it's like uh, this is what I tell um, people who want to buy teams. It's like don't you don't don't buy a team just because you love the sport. I mean, you have to love the sport, but don't buy a team just because you love the sport. Um, buy a team because you love the fans of that sport and you love the fans that are within that community. And so if you like, you want to buy a sports team and you want to sit in your owner's suite and you think that's the experience that's going to be the best one, that's not true at all. It's, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, my, my son's right here. You want to say hello? I'm on a podcast. <laughs> well, <Good. okay. laughs> <What's going on? laughs> More than that. So yeah, so you gotta you gotta um you gotta love the fans of that sport. And um and the best moments I've had in uh with owning the teams is when I'm high fiving the fans, hugging the fans, tailgating with the fans, and uh and it's just it's um it's it's great. It's great. The moments with the fans are are more important than the moments with the players. They yeah. really are. Well, that's a uh, that's a that's a great uh, message uh, that you just said. And uh, so now, here's the fun part of this interview. Now I'm going to turn over the mic to you, and you're going to mm-hmm. ask me. You can ask me whatever you want, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. Okay. So here's my question for you, and it's and it's based around one of the. Um, one of the more, more memorable dinners I've had. Okay. So you took me to dinner with um, with Michael Strahan to Rayo's. Oh, that's right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, um. yeah. So <laughs> I, I, last time, that was the last time I was at Rayo's. So my question is, how did you get so close to Michael Strahan? It's kind of funny. Um, we had a mutual friend, and he introduced us – you know, this is years ago, but, uh, and we, and I'll never forget, we were in a suite. We were watching the Rolling Stones at Giant Stadium. Uh, and, uh, and Christian Peter, another former Giant, took me. Former, former Nebraska Cornhusker. Cornhusker, that's right. And yeah. uh, his brother, uh, Jason, is another one who's still out there. He actually works for uh, the Husker Radio uh, football station out there. I, so, think, um, I think I've been on his show when he was in Omaha, actually. Probably, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think he still has it. If he still has it, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a minute, but uh, I I was a guest on it. But Christian took me uh, to the concert, and uh, and he said, yeah, you know, you got to meet Stray and blah, 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 blah. And, and we just kind of clicked. And then we, uh, you know, to this day, I mean, we, you know, he's a lot busier now, so it's uh, – mm-hmm. He's, uh, I always joke around. I go, wow, you, you, you were nobody. Not like you're a celebrity. Now. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that dinner was, uh, that was a fun night because we kind of scrambled last minute and just put the thing together. It was funny at first, you know, we had that big table in the front and yeah. I was, and I was saying to myself, Man, I gotta start calling people because right now, Stray, it's only you and I. We're gonna look stupid. The two of us eating dinner there with ten. Or so you were you were desperate. And you called me. <laughs> I called who I thought would be the right person to be there. So I was like, you know what? Here we go. But uh, yeah, that was a fun night. And uh, and Rayo's is uh, we could do that again whenever you know. You just uh, I have to give you a. Uh, I never get like a week notice. I get like a twenty-four hour notice. Where that's maybe- fine. <laughs> I I've been the Rayos. I haven't been the Rayos in years, so always you know, so we, always hit me up. <laughs> all right, you got it. You're yeah. on the list. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, listen. What a what an incredible interview. What a great story. What a, a success story. And I hope all the viewers and listeners appreciated uh, Gary being as humble and honest as he could be. And I know you you have a presence on social media. So, Gary, why don't you tell the viewers and listeners how they can follow you because you've probably intrigued a lot of people and they want to keep following you and learning more about you. Sure, and I always mess this up, so I'm going to pull up my social media. So I am at Union Chasers CEO. And that's at all- Union Chasers CEO, and that's Instagram 
and Twitter. Okay. So yeah, hit me up. I respond to all my messages um, fairly quickly. And if you have any questions or, you know, you're ever in Omaha, you want to go to a game, tickets are on me. <laughs> hey, listen, you don't get too many owners to do that. So uh, <laughs> how great is that? So every, all you viewers, all you listeners, make sure you follow Gary. And uh, Gary, again, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, hang out with me and uh, and catch up. And uh, we'll do this again uh, whenever you like. You just let me know. All right, ab- absolutely. All right, look forward to it. Thanks, Big Daddy. No problem. So this is Big Daddy for Big Daddy and Friends, and we'll see everybody real soon.